Okay, we need to talk today about relative motion. That's when you have more than one object moving. Uh, how is the motion between them described? So what if they're going the same direction? So let's say you have uh, two cars on the road. You're in a car going 70 miles an hour and you're going down the freeway. You pass a car that's going 60 miles an hour. So it's a little bit slower than you are. What direction does it look like the car is moving and how fast does it appear to be moving? That's the relative motion of the two objects. Well, if you look at the car as you're passing it, it looks like it's slowly going backwards. How slow? 10 miles an hour. So you'd say it's going 10 miles an hour backwards, whatever direction that is, perhaps east, perhaps west, depends on what direction you're moving. That's the relative motion of the two objects. It, the, uh, it always describes the motion relative to one of the objects. We're always going to describe the motion relative to the object that you are in. Let's try another one. Let's say we're going opposite directions. So you're driving down the road, going 70 miles an hour east, and a car is coming the other direction on the other side of the road, going 50 miles an hour west. What is the relative motion between the two objects? Well. Seeing that you are stationary, what does it look like the other car is doing? Uh, the other car, of course, looks like it's going really fast. How fast? Well, we're going to add those two together. So we get a total of 120 miles an hour, and it appears like it's still going west. So the relative motion of the other car, we would describe this saying, how fast was the other car going relative to you? Uh, it would be 120 miles per hour west. So when things are going opposite directions, you're going to add them. When they're going the same direction, you're going to subtract them. We could uh, make an equation out of this, make it a little simpler. So here's our equation. The relative velocity of two objects. You take the other person's velocity minus your velocity, and you'll get the, the relative velocity. Now make sure you keep the signs, just like we learned with sign conventions. East is positive, north is positive, west and south are negative. If you keep the signs, you'll get the right answer. If you make everything positive or everything negative, you won't get the right answer. So make sure you keep those signs accurate. Now there are problems you're going to be doing where uh, it describes itself as relative motion, but it doesn't quite mean this. For example, you might have an airplane flying 100 miles an hour. Hmm, that's awfully slow. Uh, an airplane flying 500 miles an hour west, and the wind is blowing 100 miles an hour north. What's the, relative, what's the velocity of the airplane relative to the ground? That's not this kind of problem. All that's asking you to do is add up those two vectors. Add up the vector of the airplane's velocity with the vector of the wind's velocity and get the, rel the, and get the total velocity of the airplane since the ground is stationary. Uh, in that case, you just use the Pythagorean theorem if we, as we've seen before. Another type of problem has a boat traveling across a river. 10 meters per second across the river. The river's flowing 2 meters per second downstream. What's the velocity of the boat relative to the shore? Again, you're just going to add those two vectors because it's, the shore is stationary. You'll just uh, add those two vectors, use the Pythagorean theorem, and you'll get your answer. Uh, it's not asking you to do this uh, addition or subtraction here. That's uh, more of a vector problem. Uh, you'll have some of those on your homework, uh, so give those a try, and I'll see you next time.